All right. Well, thank you very much, Scott. Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to spend a few minutes talking a little bit about the Capitol Conference that's coming up this November, the housing process, and then actually do a demonstration of what our housing system looks like, and then allow for some questions after that. This is all designed to help you familiarize yourself with the housing process to help reduce some of the stress when housing opens up. And just as a reminder, our housing system will open up at 9 a.m. on September 17th. Going over some items about the Capitol Conference. Again, the uh, conference is taking place in November, the 12th, 10th through the 12th. It'll be at the Greater Columbus Convention Center. We're having over 150 learning sessions, a huge trade show again this year. Some uh, key events that'll be taking place on Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. We have some general sessions, some receptions, some dinners and luncheons, as well as a student achievement fair on Monday at 10. So he featured speakers this year. We have Mary Steenburgen, who will be at our first general session. Merrill Johnson as our speaker for the Black Caucus dinner on Sunday evening. And Marie Anderson will be the conference luncheon speaker on Monday. And then Boomer Esiason, our second general session speaker on Tuesday. Our housing system, we use Passkey and we've used them for a number of years. It's a simple and easy to use platform, which allows us to offer members to reserve multiple rooms at one time. Uh, our districts like to have their board members stay in the same property and this system allows that to take place. So you can get your group into one property. All the participating uh, hotels that we have this year are part of the system. It'll keep you informed throughout the process and send you emails, acknowledgement emails. Uh, and as a word of warning, we will not reach out to you. Passkey will not reach out to you to offer rooms for you. If you re ever receive any emails from a, a company saying that they have hotel rooms available for our conference, that is not us. That is not through our system. So we and Passkey do not send emails out promoting the hotel system or promoting that rooms are available. If you get those kinds of emails, just ignore those. Um, the, they're not coming from us. Uh, the Passkey system is owned by a company called Cvent. This year, we're using uh, 11 hotels. Last year, we had 10. You can see the differences in terms of the number of rooms available. So we have more rooms available at uh, this year than we did last year. Uh, taking a look at some numbers from last year, within the first 30 seconds, 400 housing codes were entered into the Passkey system. We had over 1,500 room nights booked within the first 10 minutes. There's a lot of people who are entering into the system. There's a lot of rooms being taken. And remember, as this indicates, you're not the only one going for rooms at the same time. As you go through the process, you may find that some hotels are closed out sooner than you thought would be possible just because maybe a lot of people are going for those hotels or the hotels that you're looking to do, we do not necessarily have a large hotel room block with. Uh, the Drury and the Hampton have fewer rooms than the High and the Hilton. So those are two of the properties that may close out sooner than the other two. Five steps to housing, five easy steps. The first is you need to register for the Capital Conference. Uh, once uh, your district or, or you are registered for the Capital Conference, uh, the housing contact person will receive an email. Uh, they'll, in that email, they'll get a link to the website for housing. It's housing.ohioschoolboards.org. If you go to that link right now, you'll see a nice countdown going, counting you down to um, September 17th. Uh, you'll receive a housing code that will allow you to get into the system. And as a reminder, it is uh, six numbers in your housing code. And what you need to do is gather the information on who needs hotel rooms and the nights that they need. And one of the things that we ask is make sure you have uh, a firm number of the rooms you need. Um, we don't want to see you get into a situation where you uh, have eight people registered and you book eight rooms for all of those people and you only needed six. If you uh, have to cancel those two other rooms, there will, will be a cancellation fee. And that cancellation fee happens uh, as soon as the res is 
is something that could take place as soon as the reservations have are made. So there's no grace period in terms of the cancellation fee. So make sure you know the number of rooms you need and the number of nights that you need for those rooms. As we mentioned, 9 a.m. September 17th, that's when everything starts. And you uh, we'll go through the process on how the housing system works and walk you through the process of reserving hotel rooms. Once you've completed and finish that, you'll receive uh, an acknowledgement email, and that is acknowledging you that the passkey system has your hotel room set aside, and you have those in your name, and they are reserved. And then you'll receive confirmation from the hotel from those rooms. We have our housing system open until the 17th of October that you can book hotel rooms through us. Once that is completed, about seven to 10 days, we will send the information, Paskey will send the information to the hotels. If you book a room on the 17th at the Hilton and contact the Hilton on the on September 30th and say, I want to change the name, they won't have that information. They won't have that information until the, about 10 days before the conference starts. So if you need to make any changes to your hotel reservations, you can make a modification in the passkey system. And we'll talk about a little bit about that. There is a difference between acknowledgement number and a confirmation number. The acknowledgement number is coming to you from passkey. And the confirmation number will come from come to you from the hotels once passkey has given that information to those hotels. And as I mentioned, that's seven to 10 days before the conference takes place. Five easy steps all the way through to getting you up to the Capitol Conference. I want to talk a little bit about the housing code. As I mentioned, it is a six numeric numbers. You may or may not be aware of the fact that OSBA experienced a cyber attack back on August 8th. That attack led to us losing a lot of data in our database system, and we've had to re-import registration information. So if you or your district made hotel res excuse me, conference registrations up to even before August 8th, that information had to be recreated. When we recreated that information, it created new housing codes. So if your district registered for the conference before the 9th, you will be receiving a new housing code this week. So any emails that you have with housing codes that is dated before August 9th, those housing codes are not valid. They will not work. Only the new ones that were, you'll receive this week moving forward will be valid housing codes that you can use into the system. We will resend all of the housing codes um, to you on the 16th of September. Also, I'll show you how you can see your housing codes on the website. Uh, and we'll get into that when we do our demonstration which is right now. So bear with me while I switch from the PowerPoint to the website. All so right. Before we yes. get started, um, just to reiterate, um, somebody's asking if the codes will apply to exhibitors. The new housing codes will apply to anybody that's already made signed up for conference, including exhibitors. Correct. So anyone who was registered, whether it was through a company or through a district, if they were registered in and put into our database system before the 9th of August, we have had to re-import those information. And once that took place, since the housing codes are automatically generated when something is created, it uh, automatically created new housing codes. As a reminder, this is our conference website. You'll see that at the top, register now button. If you would click on that, it would take you, if you're a school district, it would take you to this page. Your look will be a little bit differently to as an exhibitor, but both pages will have housing code information. You'll see right down there on the right-hand side of the page, list my housing code. I have three people registered for this district. So I have the possibility of using up to three rooms. If you're a school district, 
Also on this page is where you will indicate your delegate or your alternate. And you can see that this district has not done that. I will uh, let you know that only the treasurer is allowed to assign a delegate and an alternate. So if uh, you are uh, someone else other than the treasurer and you're on this page registering people, know that only the treasurer can assign the delegate. So that person would need to uh, log into their account, go to the registration page, and then they can assign the delegate. Uh, I, this is a page where I can add new registrations. If I wanted to, I could add a dinner or a luncheon function. I can remove it. I can uh, transfer it to somebody else. So all of this information and all of the registrations can take place on this web page. So I have the housing code. At nine o'clock on September 17th, after the countdown reaches zero, you will see this page. This is where you can enter in your housing code. If you enter in the wrong housing code or housing code that doesn't exist, you'll get this message. All you need to do is then just enter in the correct housing code Hit enter and go, and then you get to this page. This is the landing page for our passkey housing system. I want to point out in big, red, bold letters, during this process, do not click the back button. If you do, it's basically like starting all over. You've lost all data. So you want to keep moving forward through this process. And then after it's completed, if you need to make changes, then you go into your reservations and make a modification at a later date. So what you need to do when you're into the hotel system is figure out the dates. So I'm going to check in on Sunday the 10th and I'm going to check out on Tuesday the 12th. Now I have three people who are coming. Two are staying for two nights. One is staying for one night. I'm going to make reservations for all three people for two nights. And then after the process, I can go in and modify that one person is only staying one night for a one night reservation. It's sometimes easier to do all three rooms at the same time, as opposed to doing two rooms for two nights and going through the completing the process and then going back in and doing one person for one night. Now I will say that the opposite is not true. I cannot go in and book three room, three people for one night room and then make a modification and add a second night. It is always easier to subtract than it is to add because you're freeing up a room when you subtract. If you want to add a room, the hotel has to have that room night available. And in most cases, it will not. So you won't be able to add a room. So I'm going to book for two nights day for all three and then make a modification. As you can see in the system, I can only get three rooms. It's not gonna let me get any more because I only have three people registered. So once I have my criteria set on terms of the check-in, check-out, and number of rooms I need, then I hit the search button. This is going to search the inventory of all the hotels that meet that criteria. So right now, I can have my pick of all the hotels I'm going to select the Hilton. Once I do that, it tells me that those rooms are still available so I can go in and make my rooms. I'm gonna do two nights first, I need two rooms for the standard king and one room for the double. And I select that. All right, now I remember I don't need two standard kings. I need two st standard double queens. So what the process then is before I leave this page, I can remove the selection and remove this selection and start over and make new selections for the rooms that I need. Once I have everything right, I go on to my next page. This is where I'll add my billing information. Anything with a red asterisk means that's a field that I have to have data in.
All I'm doing is just tabbing to all of the fields as I go through the process. When you get to any of these fields that have a drop down menu, you're able to just type the first letter that you want and the first item meeting that letter that will appear. So United States is at the top of the list. I just hit the letter U and that appears in the field. Hey Jeff, a couple of questions while you're typing that in there. Um, how long do the, once you log on and you go into your reserve page, how long are the rooms held for you? Well, right now they still aren't being held. And I'm going to get to that point. Okay. They are not held until I get to the guest, entering in the guest information. The rooms are not pulled out of inventory until you get to the following page. Right. right. Billing address the same as this address. I don't want any emails. Nope. I have to click the, the procedures one. All right. Once I get to the enter the guest information, those rooms are now reserved for me. I now have those rooms. If at some point those rooms were not available, it would inform me and send me back. To, and then I would have to go back and select new properties that would meet that criteria. This is the point where if I want to, I can adjust the names. Right now it defaults to the name that I entered in on the previous page. And I can do that now, or I can make a modification and change the name at a later time. If everything is correct on this. My room stays are the correct. Also, if I wanted to at this point and say that this person's only going to go to the 11th, I can do that at this point. I click next. And this is the file, the last page to confirm everything. I see I have one standard room. I have two double queens, different stay. And I have to click this. I have read and accept the room policies or also won't finish the process. And then I confirm the reservation. And then there is my acknowledgement number right there. Right now, everything's done. I now have the hotel rooms. Everything is, is set up. Uh, I will receive an email confirmation that will show that. One of the things, let me show you that email. So this is the email confirmation I receive. Again, it has my acknowledgement number. I'm only going to receive one email. Even though I registered three people, I'm not going to get an email for all three. They're all contained in this email. So you'll see that I have, again, one standard king and two standard doubled rooms. And those are the acknowledgement numbers for each one of those individual hotel reservations. Okay. Scott, I imagine we have a bunch of questions. So far we do. One of our guests is saying, would you recommend making the reservations in one name and going back to edit the names after 9-17-24? Yes. It's, and why would you want to do that? Just to elongate. It's, 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 it's quick. It's easy. One of the things, too, is if there's a change in the reservations or in terms of the registration that you made a hotel room for Bill, but Bill's no longer going and, and, and Jim is, you can make, you're making one change as opposed to two. It's, I, I, sometimes as you go through this process, uh, adding one additional step, sometimes it's just easier just to go all the way through and just make a modification at a later date in my mind. I have a couple of questions about housing codes. If they did not receive one in the through an email or they cannot find it on the registration page, those will be resent out this week, if I'm hearing correct. And then where can you show us on the page where they should be able to find it once those codes have been resent? Yes. All right. Hang on. Let me 
pull that up. We do apologize about the confusion with housing codes. Unfortunately, with our security breach, throw a wrench in the system, but we got it fixed in time and we'll, we're going to work on getting those solutions to you as soon as possible. The housing code is always going to be on the registration page where you entered in the names people and registered them for the capital conference. That web page is always going to contain the housing codes. The housing code does not change as you add or subtract people. It's always going to be the same. It's just the number of rooms that are usable or available with that housing code will adjust as you add or subtract reg registrations. If you have more than 10 people registered, you would see a second code there. So if I registered 15 people, I would have two codes. One code would be good for 10, one code would be good for five. If you want to change that, if you want us to change that determination, we can. If you want to say, all right, I want one code good for eight rooms because eight rooms may be easier to find than 10, and I want the other code available for seven rooms, we can make that adjustment. Uh, you just need to let us know, uh, and we can go into the system and change that for you. Um, one, of the, one of the things I want to point out is when you do your inventory search, it's going to be based on the number of rooms you, you have. It may not necessarily mean that the hotel is sold out. It just may not have the rooms you want. So if you're looking for the 10 rooms at the Hilton and it says these rooms are not available, that may mean only that there's no, not 10 rooms available at the Hilton. They may have seven available. So sometimes if you have two numbers, it's a good to adjust them accordingly so that it may allow you to find more rooms. We do have a couple of people that are saying that they're still not having or still not seeing the code. I've got those people's names written down and I will follow up with you to see if we can source out the problem. We're, we're, we're still recovering uh, from that. So you may not see the codes until all at the end of this week. We're, we're straightening all that out. So they may not be available today, but we will resend those to you just to make sure. And as a reminder, an email is going out on the 16th of September with those housing codes. Um, Got another question. Sorry, let me go. What is the deadline to register in order to get the housing code before September 17th? You can register all the way up to about 8.30 on the 17th and still get a housing code to get into the system at nine o'clock. The housing codes are generated as, as soon as the registra registration is complete and then it's emailed out to the housing contact. Um, You'll also see on this page, I can change my housing contact. If something happens and somebody's not available to receive those emails or be available that day, if you want to change that, you can go into the system and change that as well. So I've got a question from a guest. Ramsey Reed says, last year, I went in to book 10 rooms at once at the Hilton. The second, the booking page opened. But I, as I was typing in my guest name information as myself, it wouldn't allow me to save to confirm and told me all rooms were booked at, the, at that. It was 9.02 a.m. How do I get through to book the maximum number of rooms? I then try to go down on the number of rooms and still no luck, unfortunately. What I would recommend in that situation is, unfortunately, everybody is looking for the Hilton or the Hyatt in that first five minutes. It's just like a Ticketmaster, if you want to see the Taylor Swift concert, everybody's fighting for those great seats. A lot of times what will happen is, what I'd recommend is, if you can't get at the Hilton, book at the next, your second choice hotel, and then we can see if there are things shake out. People end up canceling or they move hotels. They don't need as many rooms as they thought, and then we might be able to move your group. But if it's important to you that your group stays all together and you want to take care of it all at once, then I would definitely recommend booking. If it's not 10 rooms at the Hilton, it's 10 rooms at the Hampton right across the street or the Sinesta. The good thing about our hotels is most of them are within a 0.2 mile walking rate, walking distance. Um, and the rest, we do have shuttles that run continuously. So we're able to, to pick your guests up. It, it isn't you know attached to the facility, but um, unfortunately there's only so many rooms each hotel can hold and that will give us. Um, so definitely recommend getting your rooms booked rather than waiting and then having to separate your group into different hotel properties. Um, 
And I do apologize that there were some issues with the, the housing system last year. It's unfortunately the easiest way we can keep it as democratic as possible, as fair as possible, because everybody's looking to get rooms at this exact same time. This takes any personal bias out of the equation. We don't um, have any interaction. We can't tell the computer who not to talk to, or it's just the luck of the draw when it gets to when you get in on the, on the system. You know, we're always open to other suggestions as to how we can do it more fairly to each district, and we can do it in a on a broad basis to all 7,000 of our attendees at the same time. So if you have worked with other things in the past, we're definitely open to hearing those solutions as well. But I do apologize that you had some trouble last year. As a reminder, when you're entering information into this page, that does not mean you have the rooms. It's only after you complete entering this information and get to the guest information page, that's when the rooms are actually, you actually have the room. So if you're entering information where it says booking contact information, those rooms are not held for you yet. Only until you go to the next page where you have the rooms assigned to a guest, that's when you have those rooms. Just as a reminder that even though you're typing information in, the name, the hotel rooms are still not confirmed and held in, in, in your possession. So we've got a law firm that's saying the registration process is not the same as it is for school districts. It sounds like we should be able to register through the booth registration. Is that going to be covered? Its um, registration is slightly different, but the way housing is handled is the exact same. Once you correct. register through your booth, through your through bond in, your exhibitor pa pass, you will still get a housing code. It still uses the same platform. It still opens the same time, and you, you're the same exact as if you're a school board member. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Ramsey's asking if there's any tips or tricks to getting in. To, to getting rooms or getting in or getting your rooms early. And unfortunately, there's just really not a no. secret back door handshake or anything. It's just um, everybody at nine o'clock when it opens the floodgate, um, it's just kind of luck of the draw and you get in as soon as you can. The only, only hints is to just, if you need 10 rooms, book all 10 and put your same name in there so you don't have to keep and go back and change and add your actual guest names um, so you're not bogged down with trying to spell things right, email addresses, things of that nature. That's the only quick uh, hint that we can give um, that's available. Jessica, your question, only the treasurer can see that delegate information. I am entered in and logged into this district as a treasurer. So that's why I get to see the delegate box. If you're not the treasurer, you're not going to see this delegate box. Carly's asking about, she's an executive committee member of our board had to fill out a separate housing form and you emailed it to me would i only need to book a room for anyone else from our district who is attending and the answer is yes is there any way to guarantee that i'll be able to reserve a room at the same hotel no unfortunately that's just not the way it, it's luck of the draw when it comes to everybody's fair when it comes to that we do extend the courtesy out to our executive committee because they have roles and responsibilities with the conference that they need to attend to meetings, special events that they're handling. So they, they do get preferential treatment or they get their room choice. But when you're outside of that list of 20 people, it really is just, everybody's the same. The only other th one thing I'd recommend is if you have anybody that has special needs that have accessibility issues, they have sight, vision, they're in a chair, they need a, a tub of some sort. There is a way to you can mark your reservation um, on that screen, but I would also reach out to me and I can make sure that they get the, the accommodations that they need with the, the handicap accessible or the, the hearing, the sight, because um, we definitely take care of those who uh, have a little bit of different obstacles to attend to conference as well. If you're looking to um, change your housing codes to a different set of numbers instead of 10 and 5 to 8 and 7, or if you have any questions, if you have any specific needs that you, that you want to make sure that we can accommodate for you, here's an email that you can send it to, housing at ohioschoolboards.org, and, and we can take care of that with, for you. A good question. How many hotels can you book under one housing code? 
rooms, sorry. I'm sorry, she added that afterwards. I saw it scrolled up. Uh, each housing code, you can do up to 10 rooms. So if you've you, got 12 guests, you'll get two codes. Yeah, you can do up to the number of re uh, registrations that you have. So if you have five registrations, you can get up to five rooms. If you have 10 registrations, you can get up to 10. The most you can get it on one housing code is 10. We do have one other another question. Just to clarify, if you book more than you need, you will only pay a cancellation fee. We would hope that people wouldn't take extra rooms than they, they need, but check to, you, you should only be getting enough rooms for the people you register for in your housing code. If you registered eight people, you won't get a housing code for 12 people. So you should only be able to book for those eight people that you need. If you do book more rooms than you need and you cancel, there was the cancellation fee, but we do really hope that people don't yeah. take too many because that it makes other people that are looking for that hotel not available. And they won't find out that you don't need that room until closer to the event. By that time, they've booked somewhere else and uh, it can be a very precarious situation. Whereas technically, yes, but we would hope that majority of our attendees would not over book knowing that they only have to pay a small fee. And that is a $100 fee for each room canceled. It's not a $100 fee for just canceling rooms. It's per room. So if you cancel three rooms, it's $300 for a cancellation fee. And that is only up until the 5 p.m. on the 6th of November. After that, if you need to cancel any hotel rooms, you need to contact the hotel specifically to cancel a, a res reservation for that. And there is not a fee to reduce the number of nights to for your hotel reservation. Right? No. If you make a modification, there is no fee. If you make a modification of changing a date, changing a name, sometimes you're able to actually make a modification and change a hotel where you uh, rooms become available at one hotel that may be closer to the, to the convention center, and you can make those modifications. Again, you have up to 5 p.m. on November 6th to make a not modification. And um, to an answer another question, if you only have if you've registered three people, you still will only get one housing code. It'll be for three rooms. So you're gonna have as many people as you want, but each housing code is up to 10 rooms. Um, so those three people will all have the same housing code and you'll register those at the same time. And Leslie, yes, this presentation will be posted both on our LMS as well as our YouTube. And I'm gonna repost those links here in just a second in the chat for you. It'll also be posted if you see right now on your screen, the link conferenceohioschoolboards.org. It's gonna be also posted on the housing page on that conference website. So you'll be able to see a link there as well. So as a review, you need a you'll need a housing code to get in, into the system on the 17th at nine. A housing code is good for the number of registrations that you have uh, for the conference. You only need one housing code for up to 10 rooms. You don't need an individual housing code for each one. Um, reservations can be made up through the 17th of October to receive our conference rates. Uh, you can see the rates also on the conference website. Remember, a credit card is required to guarantee the reservations. You need to enter in that credit card information. And that credit card needs to have a date outside of the Capitol Conference. So if your credit card expires in October of this year, you need to use a different credit card. That credit card has to be good all the way through the November conference. Any other questions? Yeah, we got one more just showed up. Sorry, I was typing another one. Yeah. Never, okay. Ashley, I think has got her situation. There are some, again, some codes of, are going to change this week. You'll get new codes that are going to be emailed out to you. So if it's not showing up right now, it will, I promise. If not, I'm going to put my email in there. You can email me directly and I will look into the code situation or your particular circumstance. I know it's frustrating. We apologize. Um, unfortunately, we had everything set up for success and then fate inter intervened and, and took over our system. Um, so we're trying to recover that as possible. We didn't want to, though, delay this meeting 
uh, to inconvenience anybody, but we wanted to get the information to you as soon as possible. So if you're having a code issue and it's not been resolved by the end of the week, please email me. If you have, I'm happy to look into it. We're going to research that and get those to you as soon as possible in well in advance before the September 17th date. We've got a whole month until that happens. It sounds very scary or cumbersome, and there's a little bit of a change and in influx, but I promise we'll make this uh, as easy as possible as we can for you. And we'll get those codes out to you as soon as possible. And I'm going to put my email and my and Jeff's email in there as well. You're more than welcome to reach out at any time with questions. Well, this is what we live and breathe and do all the time. So we're here to help you as much as we can. And I'm going to put that in there before I forget to hit enter. And I'm going to, Jeff, you can go back. Sorry. Um, I think we're caught up right um, now. Just as a reminder, too, these are the hotels we're running transportation to. Let's pick them up at the door of the hotel and drop them off right at the convention center. These are some uh, the times that they run on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. So you can they stop after the events for that day are completed. And then just remember the five steps. Register for the conference. Gather your info and get ready. Reserve the hotel rooms. You'll receive the confirmation from uh, Paskey. And then check in and have fun at the conference. And Scott and I both hope to see everyone who's here today at the Capitol Conference this coming November.